Okay. Today is Sunday, the 14th day of January 2018. We will be reading from Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16 to 18. Only a few short verses. Isaiah 8, 16, 17, and 18. And it reads, Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples, and I will wait on the Lord, who hides his face from the house of Jacob, and I will hope in him. Here am I, and the children whom the Lord has given me, we are for signs and wonders in Israel, from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, we thank you. Father, once have you spoken and twice we want to hear. Father, we open our hearts, we open our ears, we open our minds, we open our spirit, we open up every gate to receive you and you alone. We apply the blood of Jesus on our minds and we declare that we have the mind of Christ. We declare, we apply the blood of Jesus on us, O Lord, and we receive peace, peace in the Holy Ghost to hear what you have to say, to assimilate it, and, and we ask for the skill of understanding so that we can receive exactly what you are telling us and more. Because you can do abundantly, exceedingly, above all we can ask for or imagine. Father, we are here to receive that above all. Because you are above all that we can think of or imagine. Thank you for giving us access to you. And thank you for speaking to us. We love you, Lord. And we bless your name. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Okay. Today we want to look at the prophecy of Isaiah. And I want to dwell on verse 18. Here am I and the children whom the Lord has given me. We are for signs and wonders. I want us to take that and run with it today. So the title will be For Me and My Children. We have to take it as a prayer. We have to take it as a word. We have to take it as a, as a personal word, personal prophecy for us today that we are in this world for signs and wonders. God has sent us into this world. That's why verse 16 says, bind up the testimony and seal the law among my disciples. God has chosen us as his own disciples and he wants us to, to, to seal that covenant. He's a covenant keeping God. He wants us to, to bind up that testimony and seal the, the, the covenant, the law among the, his disciples. We are his disciples. And he says, I will wait on the Lord who hides himself from the from the, the, uh, his faith, from the house of Jacob, and I will hope in him. Why does he hide his face? It's because of our sins. And that's why if uh, I'll touch a few you know, verses just to, to dig deeper in, in this word. If we look at Isaiah 54, Isaiah 54, so we are not far, from where we are, and verse 8, he says, With a little wrath I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on you, says the Lord your Redeemer. So that's what it means, the Lord who hides his face from the house of Jacob in Isaiah 8:17. I will wait on the Lord who hides his face. Why does he hide his face? Because of our sin. Because of the things we have done. But he comes to chapter 54, verse 8, and says, With a little wrath I hid my face 
from you just for a moment so that you can stay yourself up and look for me again. But with everlasting, everlasting kindness. So that covenant is everlasting. That's why it says bind up the testimony, seal the law. The, the covenant of kindness and mercy is everlasting. The covenant of redemption is everlasting. And so if, if we feel that God is far, it's because of our sins. It's because we have done, you know, we, we took ourselves out of his presence. And, and we've talked about in your wrath, remember mercy recently. So we have to understand that this God has promised us an everlasting covenant of love and kindness. So we shouldn't allow the little moment of wrath to, to make us question. Make us ask ourselves, where is God? Instead, we should ask ourselves, where am I? Like he asked Abraham, Adam in the, in the garden, Adam, where are you? Every day we have sweet fellowship together. Today I've come for our meeting and you are not there. Where are you, Adam? So with God, everything is the same. So if there is a change, we have to search ourselves. So Isaiah knows and, I, and he says, I don't care how it's going on now. I will wait on the Lord. I will hope in him because I know his everlasting covenant for me and my children. We are for signs and wonders. That is his plan for us. And we will be for signs and wonders. Isaiah 50, that same Isaiah 54, verse, um, verse 5, says, For your maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. This is the God that the whole earth is, it don't even know. And he's, he's the God of the whole earth. And they don't know him. And he says, he's your husband, he's your wife, he's your best friend, he's your guide, he's your teacher. So today we want to say, ask ourselves. We want to question ourselves. If my maker is my husband, then I and my children bear his name. Then we answer to his name then we have to respond to his name, then whoever he is, we are. If we agree with the word of God, Isaiah 54 verse 5, that this maker, the maker, the God of the whole earth, he says, for your maker is your husband. I know that's difficult for men to assimilate. So in, in the Holy Spirit, there's no, there's no, uh, uh, gender so just take it as it that when you love jesus if we can say jesus is beautiful rather than say he's handsome yes he's handsome but he's also beautiful so you can really husband means he takes care of you he looks he, he loves you he he watches over you he protects you he provides for you so your maker is your husband you bear this man's name you and your children so we have to start to change our names in the spiritual. Victoria Janet becomes Victoria Jesus. It's still VJ, God, thank, thanks be to God. So now I, I replace Vicky Janet to Vicky Jesus. If this God is my husband, then I bear his name. That means wherever I go, I have his credit card. I, I can walk in and, you know, and I have his, his authority, I have his identity, I have the identity of my husband because I answer his name and my children answer the same name. So we have to come today to God and say, if truly I am your child and I answer your name, I want to walk in that blessing. 
I want to walk in, in the fullness of that name. Because in your name there's power, in your name there's healing, in your name there's protection. You are the, 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 the king of kings and the lord of lords. Every other king bow to you. Every other king bows to you. Your, your authority above, is above all authority. And today, because of this recognition, because of this revelation, I want to walk in that authority. I want to know who I am. And that is why I need to know who is my husband, who is my father. If I am answering his name, who is he? What relationship do I have with him? As a husband, as a father, as a friend. We want to know who God is and walk in in the revelation of who he is. We want to know who our father is and walk in that revelation. He is the God of blessing. And Proverbs 10, 22 tells me that the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow with it. So the blessing that I walk in, in this my husband, in this my father, because Isaiah was bold to say, here am I and the children whom the Lord has given me. We are for signs and wonders. Our life must be outstanding. Our life must, 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 must be different. So when we walk in the blessing that he offers, the, the, the blessing that makes one rich and adds no sorrow with it, then we can truly say, that our God is the God of the whole earth. According to Psalm 112, wealth and riches, Psalm 112 verse 3, wealth and riches must be found, must be within our houses. If the creator of heaven and earth is my father, if the creator of heaven and earth is my husband, if the creator of heaven and earth is my best friend, then Wealth and riches must be found in my house. He declared to Abraham, even before the, the, the sealing of the covenant, I am your exceeding great reward. So wh wh why, sh why should we settle for less? Then we need to train our minds. If God is our exceeding great reward, Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. Then we need to, to start to wash our mind of who the world think we should be, of who people think we should be, of even who we think we are, and start to claim the inheritance that God has for us. Because Numbers 23, verse 8 says that the one that God has not cursed, no human being can curse. The one that God has blessed, no human being can curse. Numbers 23 verse 8. Because Balak tried to use Balaam to curse the Israelites, he said he started to declare, I see them high up there, I cannot curse them. Oh, whom the Lord has not cursed. I cannot denounce who the Lord. I want to be like them. May I die? They are dead. May I? He started to bless them instead because he saw the glory. Me and the children the, whom the Lord has given to me are for signs and wonders. We have to step up. Step up and, and warm ourselves up. Make up our minds to be signs and wonders. To live in the Holy Ghost, to understand who we are in the Lord, to understand our inheritance, bind up the, the, the testimony. Bind up the testimony, seal the law. Claim what is yours. Our God is a covenant keeping God. For a moment he hides himself, but that is for us to help us to sit up. Because with everlasting kindness, 
he will bless us. And he's not man to lie. If he speaks once, he speaks forever. With everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. If we look at Isaiah 59, Isaiah 59 and verse verse 4. So we want to to see the, the opposite of what we are talking about. The opposite, which is the evil part. So verse 4 says, No one calls for justice, nor does any plead for truth. They trust in empty words and speak lies. Listen to this. They conceive evil and bring forth iniquity. That's the opposite of what we are talking about. Rather than blessing, rather than goodness, rather than all the the kindness and, and, and mercy that God is promising us, because the wicked conceive evil and bring forth iniquity, so they do not see it. They do not see it. That's why people keep asking, where is God, where is God? Where, how can you see God when you don't want any relationship with him? He says, my blessing, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow to it. That's what God wants for us. So if we see the opposite, it is because no one calls for justice, nor does any plead for truth. They trust in empty words. They'll rather go pay money and go to seminars than come to the one hour prayer meeting, which is free. Because they don't want to, to seek the truth. They trust in empty human words. They trust in empty doctrines. Speak lies to themselves and, and believe it and live it. And then they ask themselves, why, why is this happening? Because you are far from the truth. So we who understand the truth must seek to live that life. We must receive. We must change our names and start to bear the name of our husband and start to bear the name of our father. Amen? Because his hand is not short. His hand is not short at all at all to, to bless. The, the beginning of Isaiah 59 that we just touched on. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. That is all. That is all. What holds back the blessing is when the wicked conceive evil and bring forth iniquity. We, we, we hear of generational curses. Generational curses are nothing other than evil covenants. Evil covenants that have, have been the same way God made covenant with Abraham and it is still working with the people of Israel today. The same way our fathers made covenants to the gods that they knew. Evil covenant. So it still works. Until you break it, it still works. Because it's a covenant. So we have to to find out the truth. That's what, what that Isaiah 59 says. No one calls for justice, nor does any plead for truth. We need to find out the truth. What is stopping me? And constantly by revelation, cut them off. If the covenant of Abraham is still working for the children of Israel today, even when some of them don't even acknowledge God, that land is blessed. 
The physical soil is blessed. And that's why people are fighting for it. It's a covenant. And we all come out of unbelief, out of, you know, ungodly backgrounds. Forefathers and fathers who, who, who made evil covenants with evil people, who had nothing to do with God. These things are still affecting us. While God said, while the word of God, Proverbs 10, 22 says, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow. Why do we go around being sorrowful? It's because there's another covenant that is still in, in oppression. We have to change our name spiritually. We have to make sure that we cut ourselves off from all these ancestral things and evil covenant that we knew nothing about. People, before you are born, they, they declare things over you. As you are being born, they declare things over you. You are a baby, you are innocent. Of course, that thing is still following you all your life. In, on the opposite, we shall conceive holy and righteous children that will bring forth blessing for the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. Amen. We refuse to, to live in those old and evil covenants. We break loose from those covenants by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Amen. We live in the new covenant. We choose Amen. the new covenant. Amen. Isaiah has a lot to say to us today. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9. If we read Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7, just two verses. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government, uh, government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this you see that is what is spoken over a child that is yet to be born it is declared this child that is going to be given to us the government will be on his shoulder. His name will be wonderful. But some of us, as you are born, your great-grandparents, they already established one idol worshipping shrine. And they say, oh, my, my, grand, my daughter will worship here. My granddaughter will worship. It follows. It's a covenant. It's a covenant. Until you wake up and break it, it will work. Here is declaration over Jesus. And this is the person whose name we, we bear today. His name is wonderful. His name is counselor. He is mighty God. He is everlasting father. He is prince of peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. So you live in peace. You claim it for yourself. Like Isaiah said, me and the children the Lord has given to me are for signs and wonders. I'm not accepting anything else. I am here to live out God's glory. I am here to be a blessing in my generation. I am here to be the light of the world. I am here to be the salt of the earth. Wherever I go, people will have good taste in their mouth. Wherever I have, Marco Sarata. There has to be qualities of godly children. Different from children with, with all these ungodly and, and evil covenants. We have to step up. 
and know that we are no more who our parents called us to be. We have changed our names. Our surname is Jesus. Listen to Isaiah 11. I said it already. Isaiah has a lot to tell us today. Isaiah 11 from verse 1 to 5. He says, They shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse. You see, this is prophesied hundreds of years before Jesus was even born. So whatever you speak will go from generation to generation. That's why God is a covenant-keeping God. He says, my, my, my uh, um, covenant of, of kindness, my, my, my kindness, I, I, he said, even though I, I keep on trying to look for what we just read now. In Isaiah 54, you just have to speak it out. He says, even though for a while, a little while, you saw my wrath, but with everlasting kindness. So this thing goes forever. That is his will. If we don't walk in it, that does not mean that he has not spoken it or that it is not him. That's why we have to seek him and walk with him and claim his name and claim everything he has for us. That was in Isaiah 54. Everlasting kindness. I will show, I will have mercy on you. Says the Lord, you are redeemer. He redeems you because you, you've been lost. So going back now to Isaiah 11. They shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse. And a branch shall grow out of his root. Shall grow. This is something that God declares long before it happens. And it continues to say, verse 2, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Same way our great-grandparents went to their shrine and, and, and called some stupid names and said, oh, this spirit will follow my children and my grandchildren. Break it in Jesus' name. Amen. Here the Lord is declaring, Isaiah 11 verse 2, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. These are the things we have to declare into our children's life so that we cannot say, oh, my children has to go to a special school because he cannot manage in a normal school. No, your special school will be because you are a prodigy. You are better than others in Jesus' name. Amen. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Whatever you do, you do it with wisdom and understanding. You are better than your peers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Spirit of counsel and might. You advise your teachers. You advise your managers. You advise your elders. Because you have the power in you that is above all. Not in pride, but understanding that your, your surname is Jesus. You are mighty and you have the spirit of good counsel. You can advise people. You, can, you know what you are doing. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. You do it in the fear of the Lord, in humility. You don't do it with pride. You do it knowing that that knowledge is not yours. It's because you have a father who owns that knowledge. So you are, you are just inheriting it. It is an inheritance. And this is what we need to walk in. He is delight. So you delight in the fear of the Lord. Verse 3. And he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes. No, 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 no. Nor decide by the hearing of his ears. Because you are walking in another realm. You don't judge with what you see. God, give me your eyes. God, give me your mind. We declare we have the mind of Christ. 
Father, I will not let what this person does to me affect me because I live above the standard, the standard of this world. Father, I need your heart to love them like you love them because you allow your sun to shine on them. You allow your rain to fall on their farms. Father, if you can do it, give me your heart to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. We will not judge with the sight of our eyes nor decide with the hearing of our ears in Jesus name Amen. verse 4 Isaiah 11 but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked verse 5 righteousness shall be the belt of his loins and faithfulness the belt of his waist. So he lives in holiness. These are the the, the attributes, the qualities of godly children. This is our father's character. This is our father's attributes. This is our father's lifestyle. And this is what we want to inherit in the name of Jesus. That's why Isaiah is bold in, in, in that verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 18 we read. Here am I and the children whom the Lord has given me. We are for signs and wonders. We reject anything else. We want to live a life of signs and wonders. We want our life to be full of miracles. We want our, our people to look at us and constantly ask, how are you doing it? What is it that you know that I don't know? And then you ask them, do you know my surname? And they look at you and say, yes, I do. I say, no, you don't. Because if you knew my surname, you would not ask me that question. And then they will ask you, what is your surname then? Are you kidding me? I know you. I will tell them, my surname is Jesus. When you see me write VJ, don't even think it's VJ net. It's V Jesus. So the message today is do not fret. Do not fret because God has mandated and created you for signs and wonders. Amen. And with revelation, we will walk in it in the name of Jesus Amen. for his Amen. glory. So don't fret when people just come and hate you for no apparent reason. It's because your light is shining too much in their eyes and they don't understand why you are shining. Remember Joseph and the coat of many colors? That coat, wherever you could see it from afar, if you know the story of Joseph, the brothers had gone out to tend the, the, the sheep. And the father, in, in his kindness, told his son that he loved and favored. Okay, now, go and, and see what, you know, how your brothers are faring. And because of his beautiful coat of many colors, they could see him come from afar. And they say, aha, there comes that dreamer. And before he could even come near them, they plotted to kill him. Only that, uh, uh, I think, um, what was his name? His, his brother Reuben said, no, don't kill him. Let's put him in the pit. And why was he hated? Because his father loved and favored him. That, that was all. It's nothing, nothing that Joseph did. So my point is keep shining. Yes, when you shine, people will hate you for no reason. But don't fret about it. Don't let that bother you. Because of the revelation that you have today. And I pray that someone receive this revelation and be consoled in the name of Jesus. Yes. Joseph was despised because of the blessing on his life. And he did not start outside. He started right from home, right from his household, right from his siblings. 
and you'll be wondering, but all I do is love them. But all I do is being kind to them. Why do they hate me? You will receive the revelation of your promotion today in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is easy to moan and complain. Yes. When people act funny towards you, especially the people you truly love and care for. It, 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 you know, without this revelation, you'll be like, but what have I done? And they will, they will start trying to dig up something that happened 20 years ago. No, there's nothing. Jesus was there. Pilate was saying, give me one reason. Give me one bad thing he did. None of them could say all they shouted was crucify him. We don't want to know what he did. We just want him dead. And here's Joseph. If Joseph could leave it, I declare that we will leave it in Jesus' name. Amen. And we will rise up to the throne for the glory of Amen. our God in the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. I don't care what pit they throw us in. I don't care what prison they throw us in. We will rise to the top. Amen. Because that is the will of the Father concerning us in the name of Jesus. Amen. So instead of, of asking God, why, why, why? Today, we should start a new habit. Start to declare, Lord, I agree with your plans. I don't understand it, but I agree with your plans. Yes, it feels very, very bad to my skin to my ego, to my flesh. Uh, I, I am hurting. But Lord, I agree with your plans. Let us carry on. Lord, let us carry on with your plan because I know where it's heading. My haters, my enemies, see on, they judge with what they see with their eyes. They don't have a vision for the future. You know when you sign, you, 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 you open up certain things on... on on Google or, or internet. And they will ask you to do this and do this. And then it, there comes a box that you have to tick, I agree. If you don't tick that box, you can never go forward. Today, God will give us the, the, the grace to tick his box, I agree in the name of Jesus. Amen. And he will give us the grace to leave it even though it hurts. Because it hurt, it certainly hurt Joseph. Your brothers lie against you. They throw you in the pit. And then, see, it, all, all this, the fact that they did not kill him was because of God's plan that he agreed to. He said, Lord, well, if this is my end, let it be. I commit myself into your hands. And then God touched Reuben. He said, no, let's not kill him. And then they saw, then, he, you know, as they were thinking, eating, and, and, and according to the story, they saw these uh, slave traders. Oh, first it was the, I think it was the, the Philistines with the, with the spices, and then the, the, um, Medianites, and then they sold, they sold him, and then of course he was sold to Potiphar, and even then, because his mind was clear, he didn't go there mourning and, and scoffing and doing, he, he was always smiling, because of his smile, because of the light around him, Potiphar started flourishing, Potiphar's house was blessed, and before you knew it, Potiphar's wife started noticing the poor boy again. And she tried everything. When he refused, she grabbed him. He ran. Again, another coat. She cut her coat. The coat is telling all the stories. When God has put a mark on you, it will tell your story in Jesus' name. But if the enemy tries to use that against you, we know. Because at the end of the day, 
Joseph declared to his brothers, what you guys meant for evil, God meant it for good. Hallelujah. Amen. That will be our story in the name of Jesus. Amen. What the enemy means for evil, our God will change it for good, for his glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. That is the mystery of greatness. Stop mourning. Just keep loving them. Be your best in every situation. Because even as Joseph was in the, in the prison, they still made him head of the prison. You cannot hide your star. And he did not complain. He was still the best wherever he was. That is the mystery of signs and wonders. Understanding who you are, whose name you are bearing, rather than allowing people to stigmatize you and put things on you that God has not put on you. Keep on living the godly life that God has written concerning you. Keep on seeking him. Keep on declaring, I am for signs and wonders. My life has to be a life of miracles. Amen. Here am I and the children whom the Lord has given me we are for signs and wonders. Amen. In the name of Jesus. To the glory of our Savior Jesus. Our Redeemer. Who has promised. For a little while you have seen my wrath. But with everlasting kindness. I will have mercy on you. Because I am your Redeemer. So we want to pray. We want to hand over our lives to God. And say Lord. If you say I am for signs and wonders, that's what I want to be. Romans, 4, uh, Romans 14 verse 17 talks about the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. If you came to this world to eat and drink and watch TV, then you are in a wrong place. Romans 14 17. The kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. But what is it? But of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So you have to choose the path of righteousness. You have to choose the path of holiness. You have to choose the path of peace. You have to choose the path of joy. The joy of the Lord. Because they that know their God shall be strong is not your strength this is what daniel understood in in daniel eleven thirty two. anything can happen but but the people that know their god shall be strong and do exploits we are here to do exploits we are not here to live a normal life our life has to be supernatural. Our life has to be full of miracles. Our life has to be a life of signs and wonders. We have to prevail with signs and wonders in the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the name of Jesus. We are for signs and wonders. Therefore, we will conceive holiness. We will conceive righteousness. And we will give birth to greatness and wealth in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Let us bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your love, for your guidance, for your light. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your grace. And God the Father, for your heart of love. That because you knew who we were or who we would be, you had to speak your everlasting covenant of mercy and blessing for us if we seek you. So Holy Spirit, we ask you today to help us. Give us that spirit, that grace of, of supplication, the spirit of supplication that, that we will seek the, the face of Jesus. Because that's the face of the Godhead that we know. And Jesus is the way, the only way to the Father. And by your guidance, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would empower us 
that your light will shine on us. That we will walk in your light. That we will seek the truth, which is the person Jesus. And that we will inherit that which Isaiah prophesied. A life of signs and wonders. It is our inheritance. If Joseph did it, we will do it. In the name of Jesus. Because Joseph, even though he was sold out, even though he was thrown in prison, he rose up to the top in one day. The same way the children of Israel, for over 400 years, slaves, one day they came out. Father, we will come out for your glory in the name of Jesus. And we declare over us, in this 2018, we choose to walk with you. We choose to agree with you. Father, we tick that box. I agree. We agree. We receive this revelation. And we choose this new habit and declare, Lord, I agree with your plans. Have your way in our lives for your glory. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen.